It's time to dish. It's Travers Week time, too. Classic runners back in action at Saratoga Racecourse. And joining me to discuss this barn burner of a race is the Paddock Prince himself, David Levitch. David, who could ask for anything more than this Travers Stakes? Yeah, it looks like a good field. We got all three of the um, Derby, Preakness, Belmont winners, first time since 2017. So I know a couple of horses that did end up dropping out, but it looks like we're going to get seven horses. I was going to say we got Pace, we got Forte, all the um, Triple Crown winners. So when well, I Triple Crown winners, all the Derby and all that, like I said. So it's going to be um, – should be a good race. Yeah, and uh, now this is the, – the kids call this a blind reaction. You have not seen – my fair odds for the race, but you're about to. And one of those horses who dropped off is on here, uh, but he was the longest shot. So doesn't really affect what you're about to see. I, I did this before that was known. Uh, so very eager to hear what you think of these fair odds. I love me. Well, yeah, El Morocco. Yeah, that was the long shot. Um, I don't know what I feel about Scotland. That's the first horse I think about because I saw he has some steam. His Curlin win was good, but, I mean, he got everything he wanted in that race. He did look good stretching out for the first time, but with National Treasure in the race, I guess he could stalk the field. I don't know about him. I wouldn't take any lower than 10-1 to 1 on him if I was betting to win. I think Forte is going to be – I know you, that's your fair odds, but I think Forte is going to be a pretty heavy favorite in this race. I think he's just going to keep getting bet and bet like he should. I don't know how they're going to bet Archangelo. That's the tough read for me coming off a layoff. That's um, my toss. I, I hope they bet him. I mean, now if he ends up 6 or 8 to 1, not that I'm going to be interested, but then it's sort of like, okay, what is he really adding to the value of this race? Because that's probably a fair price. But, I, I mean, I'm hoping he's 3 to 1. Yeah, I actually don't know how they're going to bet this race with Archangelo and Mage. I know they said Mage needed the race last time in the Haskell and he ran well. I don't know if everybody's going to know the situation with Javier and Saez. Javier didn't pick Archangelo. The connection to Mage picked Saez because they didn't want to keep waiting for Javier to pick his decision. So I don't know if right. people are going to try to play the jockey game. If I was a betting man, I think Mage would be the second choice over Archangelo. But I think it'll be I agree. Close. I think it'll be close, but I would if I was picking the line too, making the line, I would make Mage a shorter price just based on his Derby win. He needed the race in the Haskell according to the connections, but he ran well in the Haskell. So, yeah, I would. <laughs> I'm not a big Archangelo fan off a layoff like this. I know he's been working super well, but the last two winners of the Travers won the Jim Dandy, so I kind of like horses coming into the race with the prep. But I mean, I guess it hasn't been that long. It's been two months, basically two and a half months. Yeah, long enough for me. I mean, there's a reason Pletcher ran his horses in prep races. and He also got a fantastic trip in the Belmont. Like, I mean, he slipped right up the rail and got the complete run of the race. I'm not sure. saying he couldn't get a good trip again, but I don't know. He's a horse that had everything go his own way. No, in the I'm, I'm against. Yeah, and Absolutely I'm not. Absolutely against. Uh, not speaking I'm, of I'm, jockey I'm, changes, Tappa Trice will get a new one since Saez is on Mage. Uh I guess I, I mean, if he gets overlooked here, I feel like I'm going to end up running it back again. I will say, you know, between him and Disarm, who I think might get uh, a little bit of play beyond my fair odds, which are 12 to 1. And again, these are not uh, post positions or anything. It's alphabetical order with my fair odds on the right. Uh, but if you were to offer me a head to head, I wouldn't think twice uh, about Tappa Trice over Disarm. I think this, I think um, Tappet Trice's jockey switch is a massive deal. I mean, nothing against Saez. He's a world class rider, but this horse is, if you watch his races, he never is allowed to just get into a rhythm. He is shrugged on the entire time. It doesn't even look comfortable for him. And I, he's getting blinkers on. And sometimes when you get a jockey switch, a different kind of rider, too, because Jose Ortiz and Luis Saez are nothing alike in the way they ride. I think it might. I'm hoping he can relax a little bit. There's only going to be seven horses in the race. I don't think there's going to be a ton of kickback issues for him. If he can sit in the clear and the pace is hot, I mean, I think me and you have been – I think you've been a big fan of his, and we keep following him. I picked him in the Derby, and he's obviously a disappointment. He didn't run bad in the Belmont. His Belmont trip was impossible. He was just stuck four wide the entire time and shrugged on. Horses aren't winning with that kind of trip going a mile and a half. And then the Haskell – I don't know. I don't know if that's his kind of track to run at. So I'm not going to pick him, but I definitely think if he comes second or third, or even won the race, I wouldn't be completely shocked, but I definitely think he can get a piece in here. And he's going to yeah. be overlooked finally. I think people are kind of off him now. 
I agree. Uh, now with seven horses, he won't be so overlooked that it's like, oh, I can't believe Poor he choice when he paid thirty bucks. But uh, you know, certainly from a ranking standpoint, I mean, he could I could definitely see him being as low as fifth or sixth choice against this group. So maybe there's some opportunity there. Uh, the, the one negative I'll say is the number in the Haskell it came back dreadful. Uh, the the Ragazin sheet uh, just was really slow. Now. If you're willing to say it, it was a track and that's not his game, then there is an excuse. And he has uh, a fast number. He has two fast numbers to run back to that would be good enough to win this. So, yeah, he's going to be hard to resist for me. Right now, I would say I prefer Mage as the second choice. And obviously, Forte, uh, who I know you like. Not Surely, though, even you, as big a Forte fan as you are, you have to have a low bar where you're like, well, I, I can't play him at. Is it two hey, to five? I don't, is it even I, money? Is it nine no, to five? No, no, I would never bet him at even money, but I do think he's a very likely winner of this race. He's never done anything wrong. He finally ran that big buyer that everybody was looking for last time out, and the right. blinkers really put him in the game more. He was really trying to go early. So, I mean, if it's a mile and a quarter race, I would think National Treasure and Scotland are on the lead, and then he, I really think he could be sitting third. So, I just think he's going to. I'm not worried about the distance with him. I know he's a violence player, no, but he, yeah, he handled the Belmont just fine off a of layoff. So I'm not worried about the distance with him either. Obviously, I just don't know what his negatives are now. I don't know. I don't know what he's. He's only won. He's never really run a bad race in his career, and he just keeps getting better. Now this is the second race off the layoff, so I, I don't know what his negatives are. Third, I would say the only, and it's not a negative to me. It's just a, a positive for Mage. Was going to be a longer price is. I thought the Florida Derby, that setup where Mage was in his career, uh, was a fantastic race. I don't I don't necessarily buy the stuff, oh, Mage was better that day. I don't know about that. Um, you know, Forte won a race that most horses would not win with that trip. Um, but Mage ran awesome, too. So t to me, looking at that race, what Mage did next out off of prep, and then looking at this race, both coming in off different preps, I don't think Mage is that much far farther away that I'm not willing to take the longer price, but I pretty much think it's one of those two or tap it trice. Yeah, I agree with you on the Florida Derby assessment. I think they've both ran very well and both had excuses, but Forte was just a little better that day. They both for you know, Mage moved early, Forte had to wait and go around. So I agree with you in that assessment. Um I don't know how they're going to bet National Treasure in this race because Baffert has such good success in the Travers ship in East, and he did win the Preakness, but it's one of the worst Preaknesses we've seen in a while. Blaze, <laughs> I mean, I'm not being a hater. Blazing Sevens came back to run terrible in the Curlin. I mean, nobody's really Mage, – Mage didn't run great in the Preakness. He didn't get a lot of pace. He just ran an okay third. So I don't like National Treasure, but it's going to be interesting to see how they bet Baffert because obviously when he comes to New York, he's always dangerous. Yeah, which is – I mean, I – I remember after we lost with Pharaoh, and there was definitely some, oh, Baffer can't win the Travers. It had been since point given. That's and just then, because American Farrell actually got pace pressure in that race. Right. Well, that was on his only race. I think he got pressured in any loss. So it was, it was just game. one of like the horses Baffert had brought. Like it, it was pure circumstance. It wasn't, I mean, Pharaoh obviously was expected to win and people were disappointed. But yeah, it made sense why he did get beat. And then Baffert showed them. He showed up with Arrogate who ran one of the best races in the history of the breed in the Traverse Stakes. It's the fastest number Brisnet's ever given. And then he won it the next year and beat every Triple Crown horse with West Coast, who, whatever. So, yeah, I mean, cl clearly Baffert has gone over the hump of, we know we can ship in and win this race. But for me, Preakness was a perfect storm. The Cox came out. He ended up on the lead. National Treasure was not a world beater before that. He still isn't. I hope he takes money because he's an underlay for me. I agree with your fair odds. I I don't think he should be any lower than ten to one in this race. If his if Bob Baffer was, I know it's easy to say if Baffer wasn't the trainer, he would probably be in the fifteen to one range. I just sure. Baffer, yeah, I just I, I can't play him. I would never use him below ten to one in anything, in my opinion. Especially if Scotland draws to the inside of him, I just don't know how they're going to rate Scotland. No, he has to go. I mean, why and why would you rate anyway against this? No, group? I know, I know. Take I just, it to him. Yeah, I think they will. And disarm is getting. I like to disarm in the Jim Dandy. He was not very good in my obviously, but he is getting blinkers on. And Asmussen's trying again. 
he's not a horse I would completely discount for like third or fourth if you like tries and supers because I feel like he's got the talent. Maybe a dry track will help, but his Ellis Park race over a wet track was good. So I don't know what happened last time, but he's a little interesting with blinkers on. I would much prefer him over National Treasure in Scotland. All right. Well, uh, it is Travers Week. Had it on the marquee and everything. Uh, a lot of good races, Travers Day, and also around Travers Day, uh, especially the personal ensign. And I hope people think, oh, clear, maybe different tactics. I just think Nest is better than her. I completely agree. I I, I think Nest. Well, the other thing about the two Phillies is if you look at the post position draws, Claire has post six. She's going to take back. They're not going to send from post six and try to get into three way. I'm sure Cox will go from the rail with the horse and the Delaware handicap. I just think Ness is going to sit second. And anytime she gets the jump on anybody, she's just – her turn of foot is so fast. And I was watching an interview today. Pletcher said she's doing – she just thrives with racing and she's doing even better now, I would think. Second off the layoff, she's just going to be tough to beat. But Claire Ayer is a very good horse who has overcome slow paces. But I don't know if she can overcome a slow pace against Ness if Ness shows up just based on how quickly her turn of foot is. One, uh, you know, it's a, it's a big question mark, three to four for either sex, but Phillies, we've we've seen it not pan out, two to three, three to four, et cetera. Uh, that question was enthusiastically answered because Clear Ear was in form and Nest held her off. And, you know, to me. It wasn't really close. And to me, it's that's the type of race where I, I think you, you build off of. I don't expect any sort of regression given what we know from the barn, you know, how what Todd is able to do with, with these horses when he brings them back in top shape. Now, if that was just okay, if we were like, eh, we need to see more, or, oh, that wasn't, you know, what we saw of her as a three-year-old, I could see questioning going against her at a short price. But, man, that, that just seemed like the springboard to – potentially a great season. I mean, they're running out of time to take big time shots, but they did nominate her to the gold cup. Now, obviously that's not going to happen because it's, there was some league. weird nominees in that race. So was yeah, that. well, was I'm sure they, they, I team. mean, the, the, the pool is so shallow of older males that, I mean, there were a ton of three-year-olds in there. They must have asked Todd to nominate the barn as a favor or something. I, I, you know, it's funny you say that because I saw that too. And I was very confused by like tap at trice and stuff. Some of those other horses being in there. Yeah. yeah, that the older division, and I'm sure if she wins. But it, it gives me hope that if she wins, they could look at a race like the Woodward. I mean, that or the, maybe the Spinster, but I don't know if they want to keep her in New York and then ship to California. But, you know, if she wins this race, it's going to become the, should we run against the boys? It's just going to happen, which right. is not the worst idea this year. because no, not this year especially. I think it'll depend on what they do with Forte after this race. If he runs well, separating them, I don't That's think they would point. both. I don't think they would both run in the Woodward, obviously. But you could also run in the Bell Dame again as an easy prep, like she did last year, because she's already. So I don't know what they'll do, but yeah, I think they'll just. Would you her. send her to the Ark? No, um, <laughs> I wouldn't do it. Um, I saw Classic Causeway still over in Europe. Um, <laughs> doing random things over in Europe. So I'm sure he'll pick up the slack for the dumbest campaign horse in, out of all time, just running in well, random turf. Speaking of uh, turf horses out of that barn, some big tis the bomb news. What happened? Galdo. Yeah. I don't know, man. He better, he better have lost a lot of weight because he needs help at this point. <laughs> He's not. He's, He's two balls lighter. Yeah, he he didn't run good last time out, but you maybe a turf way this winter you'll catch him. Well, that I mean, they haven't even tried some back to synthetic yet, so no, because yeah. that day we that just now that he's a gelding, he's either going to run or go, go be a jumper or something. So yeah, he might be, and I we can't forget to mention Alan Jerkins this weekend looks probably like the second best race of the week, and that race looks absolutely fantastic. So you got Arabian Lion, you got New York Thunder, Ford Bragg, and Verifying cutting back. So wow. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of speed. And Verifying is a very interesting horse because I actually think he might be a better one-turn horse. So well, I know Brad really wants that grade one for Coolmore. So it's a, I think it's a great place to do so because I don't think he's winning a grade one going two turns. Mm -hmm. Not at this point in his career. He might as it goes on, but he's not. He, he's already shown he can't beat the top-level horses. You're right. Uh, I don't mind his pedigree for turf. I, I'd be interested to see what if they look in that direction next year. He's He's – Winning, he's running too well as a three year old to turn down these kind of purses. So I get it, but I agree. I well, Thought Travers so. Week, what do you got for us? 
uh, Saratoga all week. The weather, the weather looks like it's going to rain again <laughs> Thursday and Friday. So hopefully it just does not happen. But yeah, I got Travers week all week Saratoga, and then keep try to keep rolling at Del Mar. Are they running Thursday? Have they announced it yet? Is that Hurricane? Have they said? I anything? think they're good for Thursday. Yeah, I saw like sharks swimming around in LA and stuff. So, oh, yeah, on video. So hopefully they can get some racing in. What a know. metaphor that is. Yeah, I don't. I don't like sharks to begin with. Better yet, swimming around on the expressway. You know, sharks are older than trees. No, but every time we do a dish, I just learn something I never thought I would learn, and that's <laughs> just something I never thought I would learn today. Well, that's your trivia for the day and insight for the week, courtesy Paddock Prince. Uh, I'd say we had a lot of disagreement on these big races. Yeah, I, I think they came together. No, I th these big races too. It, it seems like the Saratoga card has gotten better. The races, the stakes races, have gotten much better as the meet has gone on. So we people can actually disagree on some races these days because the right. being in the meet was four horse fields and wasn't much going <laughs> on. So um, at least we can actually have some debates now. Based on these races have gotten a little better stakes wise as the meet's gone on. All right. Well, big day on Saturday and uh, all week. Picks available. Picks.horseracingnation.com. Link in the description. Have a great week. You're doing it. Are you going to say goodbye? Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>